أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد إن يشأ يذهبكم ويأتي بخلق جديد وما ذلك على الله بعزيز بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Last week we looked at the names of Allah Al-Khaliq, Al-Bari' Al-Musawwir And today we're going to look at three names of Allah And I mentioned a couple of them in the verse that I just recited Allah's names Al-Ghani and Al-Hamid. And there is a closely related name which we'll introduce later in the lesson. Al-Ghani and Al-Hamid. Al-Ghani. When you use the word Ghani in the Arabic language, in popular, in popular terms or on the street, who is a Ghani? Who can translate for me? Ghani? A rich person. So people, when they hear the word Ghani, General, general populace, people who speak Arabic, they think it means someone who owns a lot of things. Yamlik umuran kathira. This person who owns cars and watches and wealth. So that person's rich. That's what ghani means. But actually in the Arabic language, the original word al-ghani doesn't mean to be rich. But actually al-ghani means to be free of need. So the reason that somebody was given the name Ghani is not just because he has lots of wealth, but because he has wealth, he doesn't have to ask anybody. Because he has a car, he doesn't have to ask someone, can I borrow your car? So it's because he's independent, he's not needing anybody else, this name Al-Ghani is given. Which is why when the Prophet ﷺ is asked about Ghina, he asks his companions, what does it mean to be rich? Al-Ghina. He says, Is being rich when you own many things? Is that what it means to be rich? His companion says, yes. He says, no. Actually, being rich is something, it's a mentality, it's a mindset. It's when you are content, you are happy with what you have. Such that you don't feel the need to ask anybody else. Now you are ghani. Not because you're rich. But because you don't feel the need to ask, you don't feel dependent, you don't feel in need of other people. And that can come through contentment as well as it can come through request. Go ahead, you had a question. Uh, yeah, uh, does it relate to the word uh, So al istighna in Arabic, who can tell me where is istighna in the Quran? An ra'ahu istighna, which is in which, uh, which surah? Kalla inna al insana la yatagha. Correct. We're going to come to istighna. We're going to come to istighna. Istighna is when human beings try to be al ghani. When we try to be the independent. When, when human beings try to say we don't need Allah. This is what istighna means. It's one of the biggest crimes a human being can commit. One of the biggest problems that we have in our mind. But we'll come to that inshallah. Al ghani, we said, is the one who, who is free of need. Not just that. It means everybody needs him. Everybody and everything and every atom and every object is in need of him. There's a similar name in the Quran. Similar in meaning. Anybody can tell me what is this name? It's in a surah that we read every day. Hopefully. Yes. Ar-Rahman, not Ar-Rahman. As-Samad. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad now I use this example and uh, the reason I use this example very often, this name Allahu Samad, 
I use it for parents and for children and for young Muslim men and women who are memorizing the Quran, but they don't care about the meanings of the Quran. I always ask them, what is the meaning of Allah Samad? If you can't answer this question, you are learning the Quran the wrong way. Go back and learn the meaning. Start from Qul A'udhu Bi Nas, learn the meanings of the Quran. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his companions 10 ayahs at a time. But they would learn the meanings and the actions before they moved on. That was the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reason I always ask Allah Samad as the example is because I had an embarrassing moment in my life. I must have been 12 or 13. I had memorized maybe a third of the Quran. And there's a famous Muslim scholar, maybe many of you will know who he is, but I don't want to mention his name. I was in a conference and this Muslim scholar came to the stall. I was standing, there was a stall for the Quran Institute that I was studying in and he came to the stall. And he said, MashaAllah, what does your madrasa, what does your markas do? So I was telling the scholar, we do this and we do this and this. And look, we have so many people who memorize the Quran. He said, okay, come. All of the children who memorized the Quran come and sit in front of me. And we all sat down. We thought he was going to give us a prize or some cash. Sheikh Muhammad Ali is not here for the cash, for those who came for the cash. We thought we were going to get some prize. He sat us all down and he said, what's the meaning of Allah Samad? And there was just silence. He said, really, you memorized the whole Quran. You don't know the meaning of Allah Samad. We we're looking at him blank. He said, go and start from the beginning. Just like the Prophet said to the man who was praying quickly, he said, go and pray because you didn't pray. What you did was not salah. It was aerobics. That's my words, not the words of the Prophet. Similarly, the Shaykh, he said to us, go and learn again because you have not learned the Quran. So Allah is Samad. It's very important for us to understand. As Samad in Arabic, Samad Yasmudu, is when someone walks up a hill. Samad is used, is a term in Arabic used to describe a hill. It's not as big as a mountain, but it's a hill. Right? What does that have to do with Allah? When it rains, and it's a hilly location, or a mountainous location, like let's say in the Peak District, all the rain collects at the top of the mountain, and then it trickles down, it comes, the water comes down to everywhere else. So if somebody wants water, they have to come and they have to climb up to the source of water. They need to get to the top. Yeah. So the top of the mountain is like it's providing water to everybody else around. And everybody needs to go up to get some water if they're thirsty. Similarly, Allah is Samad. A Samad is the name of Allah that means He is the one everybody needs. They climb up the hill to ask Him for anything. And he is the one free of need. He is the top of the mountain. He is beyond. And he does not need anybody or anything. So Samad and Al-Ghani have very similar meanings. Now in the Quran, Allah's name Al-Ghani, most of the time comes paired with another name of Allah. And we always said, we have to understand the names in pairs. They didn't come single, so we shouldn't understand them single. What is the name that comes with Al-Ghani in the Quran? Yes? Al-Hamid. Okay. What does Al-Hamid mean? Very good. Is the one worthy of praise. Al-Mahmud. Right. So let's say, for example, this brother here, mashallah, he's put oil in his beard today. He's combed his beard. He looks very handsome and he's wearing a nice thobe, iron thobe. So he deserves, he deserves some compliments, right? Mashallah, brother, you got a nice thobe. You look nice today. He deserves praise from me because he's looked after himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he has given us and what he has blessed us with is so unimaginable. The praise Allah deserves from us is much more, much more than what we give. This is one meaning of Hamid. The other connotation of Hamid is Al-Hamid, meaning Allah appreciates what we do. I'll give you an example. You come to the masjid one day and you're broke, you don't have any money. As they say, you have no peas. Lasaf, Allah understand. And you only have, find in your pocket, you only have 10 pence. And you see the brother at the back, you say, look, you know what, this 10 pence, who knows what khair will come. And I, you, you drop this 10 pence in the box. And you come on the day of judgment. And all your salah, and all your psalm, and all the stuff that you did in this world, is, is in a small pile. Because you didn't do it with focus, with sincerity, with good quality. 
But that 10 pence you gave, you gave with so much sincerity that that is a mountain on the day of judgment. This is what it means, Al-Hamid. Allah appreciates your little that you do. Al-Hamid. So why does Al-Ghani always come with Al-Hamid? Why do they always come together? What's the link between them? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, I don't need you, I'm Ghani. You can sin, you can insult me, mock me, be ungrateful to me. Great, it's gonna, it's gonna come back on you, I don't need you. None of that is, I don't need it for myself, that's for you. If you pray salah, that's for you. If you give charity, that's for you. If you're kind to your neighbor, that's for you, not for me. Now, someone might hear this and they say, okay, Allah doesn't meet, need me to do anything. So I'll just, I'll disbelieve, I'll reject Allah and I'll go, he doesn't need it anyway. Then Allah says, actually, I'm Hamid. Even though I don't need it, I deserve it. It's like, imagine a very wealthy person, a very rich person. But not every rich person is generous. In fact, you might find, it's actually very common, the most rich people are the most tight-fisted. They don't want to spend their money. If you find a rich person who's very generous, you think, mashallah, what an amazing person, what a generous person. What a kind person. So you begin to praise this person because they are, they are wealthy, but they're also giving and they're generous and they're loving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just free of need. He is the giving and the loving. And he is the one who is worthy of praise, even though he doesn't need the praise. He's worthy of it. He deserves it, even though he doesn't need it from us. Now, let us come to Al-Ghani in the Quran. Where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention his name Al-Ghani? There are a number of verses with one theme. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses, He says something very similar. Allah says in the Quran, إِن تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنْكُمْ If you're ungrateful or if you disbelieve, you reject Allah, He didn't need you in the first place. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ But He's not pleased with your disbelief. وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ And if you are grateful, he becomes pleased with you. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ إِن تَكْفُرُوا أَنْتُمْ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Imagine Musa is telling Banu Israel, he says, if you and everyone on earth disbelieved in Allah, what would happen to Allah? فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah doesn't need your belief. It, you're not doing him a favor, you're doing yourself a favor. Allah says elsewhere in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We gave Luqman wisdom to be grateful to Allah. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whoever is grateful, they are grateful for themselves, for their own benefit. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And whoever disbelieves, Whoever rejects Allah, Allah doesn't need them, but he's still worthy of their praise and he's worthy of their worship. Understanding Allah is Ghani, the one free of need, the one independent, that means something for you and me. If Allah is independent, then you are dependent. If Allah doesn't have any needs, then you are, you are needy. And this is the verse I recited. Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ O people, you are fuqara, needy, poor. You are in poverty when it comes to your relationship with Allah. وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ But Allah is al-ghani, he doesn't have any needs. And he is al-hamid, the praiseworthy. The mindset this name of Allah gives you is that when you come to the masjid to pray, when you come to give sadaqah, when you come to fast, when you come to do kindness, sometimes we get this feeling, I'm doing Allah a favor. I did something great. Wow, look at me. We feel that a bit of, we look in the mirror, we think, mashallah, nice crisp thobe, nice hijab, 
you know, I do all this effort. We feel we deserve something. We are entitled to something just because we are worshipping Allah. Allah corrects this idea. He says, no. Every time you give sadaqah, you are actually putting the money in your own bank account. Every time you pray salah, you are doing yourself a favor. Allah doesn't need you. It's like, imagine you visit the house of someone who is one of the richest people in the world, billionaire. You visit their house and you think, you know, when I go to someone's house, I should never go empty handed, right? So I'm going to buy them a gift. You think, what gift could I give somebody who could buy a country with the money they have? So you go to the shop, you go to the pound store, you pay a pound, you get a perfume bottle. When you offer this perfume bottle to this rich person and you stand in front of their palace, how embarrassed would you feel? <laughs> Thinking I'm giving them this unbranded cheap perfume and this person could probably buy all the perfume shops in Manchester. <laughs> you feel embarrassed, right? You feel so low and small that what you're giving them is nothing. It means nothing to them. So when we pray salah, we should not feel big about ourselves. When we worship Allah, when we serve his deen, when we lose our sleepless nights, when we serve our parents, when we massage their feet, when we sacrifice for his sake, we shouldn't feel big about ourselves. We should feel like a poor person taking a small perfume bottle, a small itar bottle to the person who is a billionaire. We should feel what I gave Allah was nothing. It means nothing to him. What I did was small. It was not something great. It was not something amazing. I am not amazing. I am nothing. And I'm in standing in front of the one who doesn't even need me. To the extent, when Allah mentions this name, Al-Ghani, He says something powerful. If Allah wants, He can just get rid of you today. And He can get, create somebody new tomorrow. Imagine. If we are not appreciative of Allah, if we are not grateful to Allah, if we are not giving Him His due respect and due praise, tomorrow Allah can send an earthquake that will destroy all of us sitting here. And next year, there will be 50 new people in this masjid. You are dispensable. You are replaceable. You are not special. And I am not special. And the only thing special in us is how much, of, how much in our hearts we respect and we devote and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings, they like, to f they like to feel independent. You know, when you're small, when you're five or six or three years old, children need their parents for everything. They can't go to the toilet. They can't change their clothes. Everything has to be done for them. But as you grow older and as you mature and as you become an adult, people become dependent on you. You have children, they depend on you. You have old parents, they depend on you. Maybe financially, maybe physically. You have a job, you have a role. Other people, colleagues, products, business is depending on you. You start to feel like I'm the boss, I'm the man. Everyone's depending on me. You feel the world, the burden on your shoulders. It is at this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that actually you are not independent. You need Allah. And everything that depends on you is actually not depending on you, they're depending on Allah. Imagine, this is my iPad. Yes? My iPad is leaning, leaning on this stand. This stand has a little bar, metal bar here. It's leaning on this wood. This wood is leaning on this table. Yeah? My iPad is dependent on this. This wooden, wooden uh, plat is dependent on this. This metal piece is dependent on this groove. This is dependent on the table. The table is dependent on the floor. Everything is leaning on something. If I take away all of these things, really, this iPad, this piece of software, this technology, it needs the floor. It needs something stable. It needs something independent. Otherwise, all of these things is like dominoes. Like this, when we realize, I need food to live. The food requires rain. The rain requires this, this requires this. Ultimately, ultimately, if you can't follow the chain, you end up with Allah. Everything needs Allah. You need Allah. Right now, you put your hand on your chest. It's beating. The blood is flowing. What's making it beat? Can it stop at any second? Does that happen to people? 
young people, old people, people with, who are perfectly fine, they just wake up one day, their heart stops beating. We forget that we are dependent on Allah. We think that we need our landlord, our boss, our family, and we forget that ultimately Allah put them all in place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this in the Quran. Allah says, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ When there's a group of people on a ship, and there's a storm, and nobody can help them, then they make dua to Allah desperately, only to Allah. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ But when he saves them, and they reach safe land, what happens? They go back to their old ways. They forget Allah. Allah mentioned this in many parts of the Quran. This is one of the signs, one of the mindsets, one of the proofs, you and me, we think we don't need Allah. We don't speak to Him. We don't converse with Him. We don't ask Him. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Tirmidhi, Allah loves that you ask Him for every need of yours, even if your shoe strap is broken, ask Allah. Because that forces you to break down in front of Him and show you need Him. To show him that you are in need of him. You are dependent upon him. So many times, when the Prophet ﷺ would invite people to Islam, and he would spend so much time inviting them to Islam, they would start to feel, look, he needs us. He needs us to join his team so he can be more powerful with us. We are the kings, we are the palaces. And that's why when a group of Bedouin Arabs became Muslim, they came to the Prophet ﷺ, they said, see, we did you a favor. We become Muslim, we join your team now. Now you're stronger. Allah says in Surah Al-Hujurat, They came and they said, Oh Muhammad, we've done you a favor because we're Muslim. إسلامكم, oh Muhammad, tell them, you did nobody any favors. Allah did you a favor by guiding you to Iman, to safety, to belief in him when you were lost. If we understand that we are faqir, we are needy, we are poor. I said one of the mindsets that we realize is that we are dependent upon Allah for in every moment. That means we become grateful to him. Because he's the one sustaining us. But there's another thing as well. We start to see whatever we are giving Allah as very small. Like that perfume bottle in front of that palace, we realize however much Qiyam layl we do, Sadaqah we do, it's nothing for Allah. But there's another mindset. It is the mindset that if we realize Allah is Al-Ghani, it makes us more sincere. Because we give all the credit to Him, not ourselves. I'll give you an example. Muhammad came to me yesterday. For example, this didn't happen, I'm giving you a story. Just as an analogy. Let's say Muhammad came to me yesterday. He said, look Hisham, I'm going somewhere, but I don't have a suit. I'm going to a wedding. The wedding that's after Dhuhr tomorrow. Let's say he came to me and he said, look, I'm going for the wedding, but I don't have the right clothes. I only have my, my Sudani thobe, which is a thobe that can have, six people can fit inside it, mashallah. Let's say he came to me and said, look, I don't have a suit. I need to dress nicely. So that, inshallah, someone can find me a wife. I said, okay, Habib, don't worry. I, I don't have a suit, full suit. I have the coat. I gave him the coat. He went to my neighbor. He said, look, I got a nice coat from Hisham, but I need matching trousers. I can't go with a coat and Bermuda shorts. People will laugh at me. They'll kick me out of the masjid. Okay. Neighbor said, no problem, Habibi. Blue coat, I'll give you blue trousers. Then he went to one of the uncle's houses nearby. He said, look, I got a nice coat and trousers. But I have no shirt. I can't wear a coat and trousers on top of my, my vest. That's not going to fly. So someone says, okay, you know what, Habibi? I'll give you a nice shirt. I'll iron it for you. Crisp, starched. Brilliant. Now he's ready. You know what though? He doesn't have a belt. How is his trousers going to look on him? It's going to fall when he wears it. So he goes to another, another person. He says, look, I have everything. I just don't have a belt. Someone give him a belt. Then he comes to the wedding. And the moment he steps in the wedding, the groom, the person getting married says, wow, you look better than me. How does Muhammad feel in his head? Can he take credit for how he looks? Someone gave him a suit, someone gave him trousers, someone gave him a shirt. None of it is his. It doesn't belong to him. He's living on borrowed clothes. 
He can't take the credit. He can't say, yeah, thank you very much. That was six months of savings to buy this. No, he can't say anything. He looks down at the floor. He twiddles his thumbs and he says, I have some nice neighbors. I can't take the credit. When you realize Allah is Al-Ghani, you realize that everything that you have was given to you by him. You were enriched by him. What does Allah say in Surah Al-Duha? وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَخْنَا Allah found you poor. You had nothing and he made you rich. When someone comes and praises you, MashaAllah, nice Quran recitation. You think, that's not even mine. Allah gifted it to me. When someone comes to you and says, MashaAllah, nice car. You think, that's not even my car. Allah just gave it to me. I didn't deserve it. I didn't work for it. it the credit goes to Allah for everything. So when you realize Allah is Al-Ghani, you never claim credit for anything. You give the credit directly to Allah. That's why when your life, inshallah, one day someone makes a movie about your life, when the credits come at the end of the movie, you know all the names? Director, uh, producer, actor, one, two, three, four. You only have one name. The credits all go back to Allah, not to you and me. You see everything in your life. You have fadl glasses. You know fadl glasses? It's a new brand. Better than Ray-Ban. Fadl glasses is when you look at everything in your life as a fadl from Allah. It's a gift from Allah. It's not from me. I didn't deserve it. You know why? The opposite mindset is very dangerous. Qarun, what, what was the punishment given to the gentleman named Qarun in the Quran? Who can tell me? He got swallowed in the earth. You know what was one of his ideas? Opposite to what we are saying now? When all of his wealth was in front of him, his treasures, his money, his, car, his, his horses, not his cars, his horses, everything, he said, this is all my hard work. Sometimes you feel like that, right? You work hard for something. You buy a house, you buy a property, you buy a nice car. You think this is my hard work. No, Habibi. When you start thinking that way, it's very dangerous. The earth might swallow you up just like it swallowed Qarun. When you look at everything, you say, this was Allah's gift to me. And my working was his gift to me. And my breathing was his blessing on me. How can I claim? How can I claim this was for me? Me claiming this is my hard work is like Muhammad claiming that's his suit. And we all know that wasn't his suit. The credit goes to Allah. The credit doesn't come to me. This is why when Yusuf السلام, is the minister of Egypt, or if he's in the bottom of the, bottom of the well, he feels the same way towards Allah. Regardless what position Allah puts him. And that's why when he is at the minister's level, and he reaches this level of mastery, and this honor, and this wealth, and his family comes in front of him, and he has everything he wants and he needs in life, what does he say? Oh Allah, you gave me all of this. You gave it to me. I didn't earn it. I don't own it. It was from you. And you taught me how to interpret dreams. It's not my skill. You created everything from nothing. You are my closest protector in this world and the next. Look at the mindset. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَهُ When Allah describes the people of paradise, He says they are people who give what was given to them. So if I pray salah, it's like this brother came and gifted me this iPad, and I then gifted it to this brother. I can't take credit. It's his. I just, I just passed the buck. I'm the middleman. I'm the waiter. Can the waiter, you come, you sit in a nice restaurant, you order a nice pasta arabiata, a nice Italian restaurant. It's nice made in the kitchen, the waiter comes, he gives it to you. He puts some parmesan on top, mashallah. You take the first bite, can you say to the waiter, mashallah, you made a great meal. Can the waiter take credit? This is what all the husbands here try to do. People come to their house, they host them, they serve them food, and then the brother says, mashallah, very nice food. Yes, it was me, I stirred the pot in the end. No, you can't take credit, Habibi. You are just a middleman. It came from Allah, and it went back to Allah. That's what it means when we say, inna lillah, we belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we will go back to him. 
Nothing is from you and me. This Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, in Madarij al-Salikin, his book, Stations of the Travelers, he says, this is the ultimate faqr. The ultimate feeling of dependence and neediness is to realize nothing you do, you can take credit for. Everything just came from Allah. You have to buy the fadl glasses. I'm selling them for 10 pounds a piece. You can come afterwards, inshallah. All the proceeds go to Masjid al-Furqan. Yes, you have to buy the glasses of fadl. Everything you see in this world is just from Allah. It's from the fadl of Allah. And this forces you, when you realize this, you, can, you just break down into sujood in front of Allah. Great out of gratitude. When Sulaiman alayhi salam, he is about to trample the ecosystem of, of ants. And one ant says to the other ants, go and hide. Make sure Sulaiman doesn't trample you. What does Sulaiman alayhi salam say in that moment? He has a realization. I can hear the ant speak. What does he say? Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayhi. Oh Allah, motivate me to be grateful for your favors. This was Sulaiman alayhi salam's gift, right? He could hear the animal speak. When he hears the animal speak, immediately he says, Alhamdulillah, it came from you, not from me. Dawood and Sulaiman. What was their gift? Who can tell me? Both of them. Yes. Good. Allah gave them mulk, kingdom, and Allah gave them knowledge. Allah says in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا We gave Dawood and Sulaiman knowledge. When they realized they have a special knowledge, what did they say? I studied so much. I memorized so many books. It was me all those nights in the library. No. وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ They said, gratitude belongs to Allah. الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَضَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّنْ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Gratitude belongs to Allah. He chose me from so many others. You know when you realize this? When you realize Allah is al-ghani and you are the faqir. Sometimes religious people we are the worst when it comes to this. We pray salah, we do all this hard work, and we think that we are entitled to something. We think we put in the hard work, we deserve something. Do you know that you could have been right now in a nightclub somewhere, smoking something illegal? You could have been right now in a war zone, committing crimes. You could be right now in prison. What brought you here to this masjid at this time to hear this reminder? It wasn't you. It wasn't your parents. It was Allah who brought you here. And this is what Allah said to Musa alayhi salam. After 40 years of Musa alayhi salam seeing killing, murder, genocide, running away to another country, exile, loneliness, and all of this, and then Allah reveals to him the first revelation. What does Allah say? ثُمَّ جِئْتَ عَلَىٰ ya Musa. You came here to this point because I brought you here. I brought you here. You didn't come here out of your own strength, your own intelligence. You don't deserve to be here. Allah is doing you a favor. وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا You have to feel that. I don't deserve this favor of Allah. Everything I have, I don't deserve it. Allah has been so generous to me. And when you feel that, and when that breaks your heart, and when that realization sets in, you find yourself no choice. You find yourself in sujood, thanking Allah for his blessing. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayhi. Oh Allah, make us grateful for your favors. There's another important connotation of this name of Allah, Al-Ghani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, let me do... In Masjid al-Furqan, right? Every second person in Furqan is a half of Quran usually. So we'll ask, we'll ask a question. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who al ghani Who can tell me the beginning of the ayah? No cash prize today. Sorry, guys. Inshallah, next time. Afwan, I made a mistake. This is why I'm not from the people of Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Who can give me the beginning of the ayah? Something to do with spending for Allah's sake. لا. In Baqarah. 
وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Okay, I'll give you the... Ya yeah, Sheikh, all of us have to donate for this prize. <laughs> MashaAllah. We'll donate with dua. May Allah make you the people of the, of the people of the Qur'an. May Allah make you of the people of the scholars and of those who act on what they know. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabatum. Allah says, believers, that's you and me, spend from the best of what you have. وَلَا تَيَمَّمُوا الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِيهِ إِلَّا أَن تُغْمِضُوا فِيهِ And don't give in charity things that you would never even use yourself. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And know that Allah is free of need. He doesn't need you or your money or your clothes. And He still deserves your praise and your devotion and your respect. When Allah is asking us to spend, specifically He's saying, don't spend anything. Spend from the tayyibat, the best of what you have. Tell me, when we go to the charity shop, or when we go to the recycling, what kind of stuff goes to the charity shop? Brand new clothes? Used, second hand. We've become used to this idea that what we give to Allah has to be the second hand stuff, the stuff we don't need anymore. But Allah tells us, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will never reach righteousness until you give the things that you love. What do you love the most? Try giving it away. What, what item do you love the most? You prized possession. Some people, they're really into phones. Some people are really into their cars. Some people are really into... X, Y, clothes, X, Y, Z. Try giving it away. Can you do that? Try it. And if you do it secretly for the sake of Allah, you will feel in your heart a level of sukoon, of contentment and happiness and gratitude you never felt before. Now, how does this link with Allah's name, Al-Ghani, the free of need? When we are giving to charity, we don't realize we are giving this, this we are giving to Allah. Those clothes we took to the charity shop, those worn out clothes, we're actually giving that not to the charity shop, we are giving that to Allah. Allah mentions this in the Quran. When Allah asks us to give charity in the Quran, sometimes, He tells us who is going to give Allah alone. Who can tell me the ayah? مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقَرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Who can give Allah a loan that has no end term? Meaning pay me back whenever you want. MashaAllah, good. Who can give, who, Allah is asking, who can, who can give me a loan? Can you imagine? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to give him a loan. What is that loan? He's asking you to give in charity. And if you spend from what you have, Allah will give it back to you in multiples. You'll get interest on your loan. This is the only halal interest bearing loan. Is <laughs> the one you give to Allah in charity. Now apply this not just to money, to every other aspect of our lives. Let's look at time. For some of us, our most valuable asset is time. They say time is money. What time in our day, what time do we give to Allah? After work, I've done all the chores, and I put the kids to bed, and there's like three IQ points left in my brain. Now I'm going to sit, and I'm going to use the time to make dua to Allah. And actually I'm too tired, so I end up going out to get, get some food. We give to Allah the least, the lowest priority, the least of our time, of our, of our calendar. Look at your calendar. Somebody, for somebody, let's say for example, seeking knowledge, let's say that's your highest priority. That should be the first thing we do in the day before Fajr, after Fajr, before the day begins. That's, that is when the psychologists say your brain is at its peak, your mind is at its peak. What do we give that time for usually? That's what we do. In that time where our brain is at its peak performance, we are snoring. And when the brain, the brain is finished, there's nothing left in it, now I'm going to pray Maghrib Salah. 
What Maghrib Salah was that? That was a Maghrib Salah where I was thinking about the groceries and the, the meat and how many lamb, how much lamb I'm going to buy and what my cousin was doing on Snapchat. And that's the Maghrib Salah that we gave to Allah. The worst of what we have. We give to Allah, we spend for Allah's sake and we give Him the worst of what we have. But Allah asks us, step it up. Step up your game. Give me the best of what you have. Tell me, of the optional prayers, what is the greatest salah we can pray in the sight of Allah? Salah at night, in the last third of the night, before Fajr. Why? What's happening in the brain at that time? It, it, it is at its peak. At 4 a.m., 5 a.m., your brain's focus, ability to focus at its peak. When Allah is asking you to pray Qiyamul Layl, He's just asking you, give me the best part of your attention and your brain before everything else starts to snatch you away from me. That's what he's asking. Give me your best. Don't give me your worst. Right? There are some things for us are priorities. And the way we know they are priorities, if something else comes in there, we say, sorry, I'm busy with this. Some people, it's work. Some people, it's guests or socializing. Someone says to you, Habibi, uh, let's go to Sheikh Muhammad Ali Mawlid's class on, after Maghrib on that day. You say, look, sorry, that's the time I have a chai and chill with my friends. You say, okay, that's your priority. That's your priority over seeking knowledge. Fine. We have to assess what are our real priorities and look where does Allah and his messenger come on that list. And if it's at the bottom, we should fear. We should worry. We should be concerned about ourselves. Because we are giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pennies and we are giving everybody else, from our boss to our spouse to our friends, our interests, we are giving them the bulk of our time, the bulk of our attention, the bulk of money. Do you know who or what gets the most attention and the most priority and time in this world today, according to statistics? Our mobile phones. The average person between the ages of 16 and 35 spends four to six hours a day on their mobile phones. That is the best part of our attention. And that brain power and that time, we've given it away to TikTok, to Instagram, to Snapchat. We've given it away. That's why, because we're so used to flicking video to video and notification to notification, when salah comes, our brain is still, it's traumatized from all that flicking and switching. It can't focus. We've given away the best part of ourselves to something which is only using us for advertisement revenue, for money. They make money from our attention. Every second you spend on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, there is a business that is paying them for your mind, for your attention. You saw an advertisement for three seconds. Somebody's earning money from you and me, from our mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask a lot for us, of us. He asks us for three, four, five, six minutes Dhuhr Salah. We can't give him six minutes of undivided attention because we give him the worst of what we have. Inna Allah ghaniyun hamid. Allah still doesn't need us. He doesn't need it. It's us who are in need of it. Those six minutes, we're going to see it on the Day of Judgment. We're going to see those deeds on the Day of Judgment. And those six hours we spent on the phone, we're going to see that too on the Day of Judgment. And it's going, not going to be a beautiful sight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his name Al-Ghani in the Quran, he teaches us a number of mindsets. We're going to summarize. Who can tell me what are the mindsets that we should have from the name Al-Ghani? You tell me now, since I'm putting you to sleep. Bismillah. Perfect. Whatever you do, it's for your own benefit. Allah is not going to benefit from it. Yes. You feel always humble. You never feel like I've done something great. Yes, yes. You realize we have nothing. <laughs> the fuddle glasses. Yeah, they're on discount, by the way, 10%. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need. He can replace you tomorrow. You know, in football, substitutes, if you don't perform on the pitch, what's going to happen? You're going to be switched. That's the idea. If you turn away from Allah, your time is limited on this earth. Someone, you'll be replaced. Yes. Um, lack of lack of arrogance, like 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 just cause, just cause you did something good, uh, you're not gonna you're not going to go wrong both of them. 
good. Lack of arrogance. You wouldn't go and boast because you've done something. Because that thing you did was? It was from Allah. It's inspired by Allah. Yes. Yes, it makes you grateful. Because you realize that everything you had came from Allah. And he's free of need. As the prophets were, when Allah gifted them with something, they would say, Alhamdulillah. They would appreciate where it came from. What else? Dua. When you realize Allah is ghaniyun hamid, He doesn't need you, but you need Him. When you realize you need Him, you know my, my children, MashaAllah, every day they ask me for things. I need this toy. Can you buy me that, Baba? What about this? Can I have that? When are you going to take me to Masjid al Furqan? Yeah? They need me, so they have to keep asking me. They can't drive. Right? Sometimes my, my son, he gets upset. He said, if you don't take me to Furqan Masjid, I'm going to go myself. I said, how? We're going to walk. He needs me. He's dependent on me to drive him. So he keeps asking me. If we really need Allah, then what would we do day in, day out? We would ask him. But the fact that we don't ask him means we think we don't need him. We're just fine on our own. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ هذا وصلوا وسلموا وباركوا على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته